So right now we're going to go into how you can get your dream job as a nurse. Okay, Mike, so what is your number one tip on how to get the interview? If you had to boil it down to one tip. Only one? Oh, oh maybe a few. We'll start just with one. one. Okay, all right. Start with one. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Actually, there is really one that I really recommend, um, especially with new nurses, because everyone just thinks that, oh, I'm going to pass the NCLEX, I pass school, yeah. and now I get a job. You know, it's yeah. really not that easy, guys. It's pretty hard. It really, I mean, um, I used to work in a hospital as a medic um, and on the field uh, for about eight or nine years. And the thing about, and the thing about, um, uh, hospitals is that the directors of the hospitals usually do the hiring and it's not about HR or human resources. So it's really who, you know, it's really not what you know, because mm -hmm. the directors will have a huge stack of it's, it's resumes. It's pretty intimidating. They have yeah. like, they could have like 250 resumes. Yeah. And they so have to how pick, do you, you know, I mean, how do you shine in a paper? I mean, they can't read all of them. So it's. It's, mm -hmm. it's who you know. Yeah, and they have to pick, yeah. like, you know, two out of the huge stack. Yeah. So that's, I always recommend getting your foot in the door. Um, two of the biggest tips is working at a hospital so that you can get to meet the directors. You can work as, like, a CNA mm -hmm. or a phlebotomist. Like, those those are simple licenses that take, you know, a few months to get. Yeah. I mean, so, I think even if you pass, like, your first year of a registered nursing program. You already are a nurse. CNA, yeah. yeah, yeah, you can be, you can work in as yeah. an allied healthcare. Um, another big tip is to join a nursing club. Now, if your nursing club can get you into contact with a lot of these directors, whether it's you know volunteering or um, getting more face to face time with more hospital executives where you want to work, then maybe you're going to be getting more exposure. Then maybe you're going to be getting more exposure to the people you need to know who are going to hire you because. You probably get it all the time, or you probably see it, where people, they want to be like, you know, a um, emergency room trauma nurse, but no one's going to hire them because they don't have any experience, so they have to settle for, like, a nursing home or somewhere where they, maybe they didn't want to be. Which, you know, if you do get a job where you are not where, where you want to be, mm -hmm. don't stop there because you obviously can get experience while you're at that job. And you can just keep on applying to where you want to go. Yeah. So I always say try to get wherever you get hired at least a year. Mm -hmm. um, because no matter what, you're going to be getting valuable experience. Right. But um, it does look better, I think, on the resume if you do have a year on there. Now, you were saying something about doing volunteer or internship. Yeah, so I um, one thing that I did or two things that I did that I think really helped me have multiple job opportunities open to me was the first thing that I did before I even started nursing school was I volunteered mm -hmm. at a um, emergency department where I did absolutely, like, all I did was fill um, shelves, fill <laughs> with supplies. It, I did almost nothing. But just going in there and seeing what it was like to be in hospital, mm -hmm. I mean, my whole thing was, like, I didn't know if I could do it. I was like, I don't like blood. I don't like to save people in pain. I don't know if I can do this. So that was really my reason for doing it, but it actually helped out a lot. And I didn't do it for very long. I didn't do it for, for 500 hours. I think I did it for like 30 hours. But I was able to place that on my resume. Nice. And it looked good. The other thing that I did was an elective competitive internship. Mm -hmm. So however your nursing program is set up, you might have the summer off. If you don't, it's going to be harder to do that. But I had the summer off. And so during that summer, I um, applied for an internship. And I had to actually, I didn't get my CNA through my nursing school. I actually had to go take the CNA test, which is really hard. I failed the first time. Don't give up, guys, if you fail. Seriously, don't <laughs> give up. I, I put Ted stockings on wrong. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, anyways, I had to retake it, so I'm don't. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm joking. <laughs> so, don't give up if you fail the, the, the first time. It's mm -hmm. not the big deal, not the biggest deal. I'm Although, at the time, it does feel like the biggest deal. Really but, so, anyways, um, I had to get my CNA license for that. And I had to, like, you know, do all these other things, like get re letters of recommendation. I also had to uh, write a, um, an essay, things like that. But it was competitive, and I got selected. And so I was able to work at Duke University Hospital in North Carolina for the three months. And I was able to follow a nurse for those three months during her shift. And that was amazing experience, and it looked really good on my resume. So it was a lot of work to do it, but it helped me it, it opens up so many doors mm. so i would recommend doing that if you can nice 
Yeah, so I mean, I totally agree, guys. Try to get as many contacts as you can, whether that's volunteering, whether that's internship, whether you're working as a CNA or a um, allied healthcare on the floor. You want to make those face-to-face -face contacts. And yeah, it's really important. One of the biggest ways is to join a nursing club because they help you get those contacts. It's it's not really about the resume itself because there's so many of them. Yeah. You want them to pull it out of the stack. I. I mean, just, just so you guys know, like, I've had directors come and say, you know, do you know anybody that's applying that's good? So if, and if I knew somebody, I would definitely say their name. So having contacts with the nurses that you work with mm -hmm. or having contacts with the nurses that you do your preceptorship with mm -hmm. is really important. You want to put on your best, freshest face for those because you have mm -hmm. to, you have to nail it every time. And you have to be mm -hmm. eager. Like, if you're a lazy nursing student, They'll know. Oh, yeah, right? for sure, yeah. And you will know, right. like, I mean, think about it. If someone's like, you know, oh, yeah, I mean, I was trying to roll on that. I mean, think about it, like, at your work, wherever you work, if you're, like, doing all the work, you don't want someone to be lazy and you're going to have to pick up their slack, so. Nursing is, nursing is a lot of work. A lot of teamwork. It's, yeah, it's a lot of work, and everybody needs to pull their own load. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it is, it's all about teamwork, and you want to have a good team member that is, you know, really ready to work yeah ready to get in there oh <laughs> uh, okay okay hold on okay so all right guys so tip number two after we've made our due diligence of making all the contacts we could make and doing everything we can or and and applying to the jobs and making a good resume mm -hmm. you have you still do have to have a good resume oh sorry <laughs> oh whoops that's our next one applying everywhere Oh, good. Well, you still have to have a good... Oh, okay, yeah, go. Sorry, you know go what? ahead. You know what? I can't work like this. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. So step number two is applying everywhere. Now, this has to come after you've done your due diligence of being the best nursing student you can be and making your contacts. Now, what would you say about applying everywhere? Like, well, okay, so a lot of... I get a lot of emails saying, you know, that they've applied to their dream job, they haven't heard back. But I would just apply absolutely everywhere you could. Even, I mean, I applied to jobs that weren't even advertising jobs for new graduates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think any of them contacted me. But just get in the habit Let's of just, it. it's a numbers game. Mm -hmm. Don't take anything personally. It's a numbers game. That's it. And um, so I got, you know, it takes some time. It might take two, three weeks to a month to get any calls back. And whenever you get a call back, go on the interview. It doesn't matter if... It doesn't matter how many people are offering you an interview. Just say, yes, I'm free. I'll go. Because yeah. you need that experience of talking to people in extremely uncomfortable situations. <laughs> Very. Like, you need to be comfortable <laughs> when it's really uncomfortable. That's, yeah. And that's hard to do. And the only so way weird. to do it is just to push yourself and get yourself out there. So go on every interview you possibly can. I mean, I've given this tip to a lot of people. And I get these panic emails saying, I took your tips, and now I have three people offering me jobs. Crap. And I <laughs> That's was like, a good problem I know, to it's have. It's a good problem. You know, good. So I was like, well, it's, you know, you have to focus on that. That is a good problem to have. But mm -hmm. I would rather have that problem than not have a job. So yeah. apply absolutely everywhere you can, even if you have no intention of taking a job, because you never know mm -hmm. what opportunities will come your way. And doing that practice interview is so important. Yeah. I mean... When you first told me about, like, take all the interviews that Every. you can or apply everywhere, I was like, really? Like, uh, I didn't even I'm think about that. I'm a little bit that. obsessive about it. That's yeah. really good. That's a yeah. really good tip because yeah. all interviews are just practice, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, you can always turn down a job. I mean, if you think about it, you could be you could be sitting on one end and have five or six to ten people in business suits and... Mm -hmm really cold looks on their faces. Even if they like you, they might have this look on your face that you can't read, right. and it's so intimidating. Mm -hmm. So, just practice. Yeah. And that's, I, th I think that's one of the best ways to practice is the interview. Yeah, absolutely. Just taking a lot of interviews. So, Mike, how would you get the interview? No, I have the camera, sorry. I'm used to, like, looking at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike. <laughs> so, Mike. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, Mike, like, how would you get the interview? Like, do you have any tips on that? Oh, yeah, that's that's really good because a lot of people ask, um, you know, I submitted my resume and Human Resources, I've called them and they still haven't given me a call back, you know? And they always give, like, a like a really sad story. But, guys, you, you, you're you doing it all wrong. Um, 
I've worked at six different hospitals um, as a medic and as a nurse. And one of the biggest ways to get your foot in the door if you don't know anyone is to make the director's job easier. So just think about the director here for a second. They have 200 resumes. It's a lot. Maybe more. Maybe more, 250, <laughs> maybe for like one or two spots. Yeah. And they don't want to sift through all of that, you know, um, jibber-jabber and all those resumes because everyone's resume kind of looks the same. And they all are amazing. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to submit a resume that's not outstanding. Mm -hmm. So. And one of the biggest things that the directors are looking for is someone who's proactive, someone who's willing to take initiative and stand up. So what I always recommend, now this is probably um, like some renegade tips here. Let's do it. But I always recommend calling the actual hospital. Now you're going to get a front gateman, basically an operator. And then you ask for the director of the department you want to work in. So for me, mine was Joe Garcia, which is an alias. But <laughs> Joe Garcia from the emergency department. He was the director, and I'm like, hey, um, can I be talked to Joe Garcia, please, director of emergency? Now, usually if you know their name and their last name, like their person last. Yeah, the person is just going to be like, okay, I'm just, gonna they'll just forward you. you. Yeah. Like, if I got that call, I would just transfer it. Yeah. Okay, sure. So then when you get the director, you tell them, hey, I'm, you know, so-and-so, I applied for your RN position. I'm really interested, when can we set up an interview? Because you want to show that, hey, I'm making your job easier. I'm coming to you for the interview, and I am getting this interview to be in front of your face. Mm -hmm. So that's worked for me 90% of the time, and I put a big blog post on our Facebook group for our Simple Nursing students. Uh, it's, the link's down below. We'll include it, but it's really that's, that's one of the best ways. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, okay. You have to have them see your face. See Absolutely. Your face. <laughs> Sorry. So now we've contacted the director. Now, with the director likes us, and he Hopefully. he or she has been offering, yeah, right. <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah, they don't like us at all. Now. <laughs> well, hopefully, yeah. Okay, hold on. Shit. Okay. Okay. So now we have an interview scheduled, and out of that 250 resume stack, we've called the director personally, and they've invited us to an interview. So once we're in the interview area, or the interview day. What would you recommend? I guess some, some yeah. tips. Okay, so some tips on the interview. I have a video that we're going to place the link to. It's called New Nurse, How to, um, How to Ace the Nurse Interview. Mm -hmm. And there I give all of my tips. So we will put the link below for that video because I think you really need to watch it. But one of the major things that I, I talk about in that video is I say you have to go to Google and type in most difficult interview questions. And what you're going to find is a lot of open-ended questions, like tell me about yourself or... Or it can be like a um, like a problem-solving question, like give us a story about you solved a problem in the past. Yeah. So these questions are going to just be like one quick sentence, and mm -hmm. then they're going to ask for basically a monologue from you. So if you can get comfortable with those types of questions before, and keep in mind you're never going to feel a to like really comfortable, mm -hmm. like it's it's an uncomfortable situation, like everything's on the line and they know that, and you know it's very uncomfortable. But if you can get better about talking about yourself and about highlighting your good attributes and why they're good for the nursing field, so like you want to highlight everything that is would be related to the nursing field. So basically, I would highlight my experience volunteering or my experience doing the internship or I would also highlight how good I was at um volleyball <laughs> <laughs> I would also like say how good I was during my preceptorship mm -hmm. and then I would also bring in like I worked quite a bit as a waitress so I, I would also bring in you know reasons why being a waitress would be good as a nurse I'm fast on my feet I think really fast I'm good with people you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I always give the recommendation on my YouTube channel that you should always have two stories in your back pocket when you yeah. go into an interview. So, like, the two stories I always say is the director wants to see that, one, you're a problem solver, and number two, shoot, <laughs> number two, you know how to multitask, yeah. and number three, you can independently manage yourself. You don't need someone micromanaging you and your time. Because, as we said before, Nursing is a lot of teamwork. There's a lot going on at once. Everybody you, has to, to hold their own. Everybody has yeah. to do their load and then be available to help everybody else out. So have a story ready to go. They're going to ask you, um, how were you a problem solver? Or in your previous job, can you give us a story about how you went above and beyond the call of duty? 
So guys, have a problem-solving story. Have a multitasking. And what Caroline said, that serving is a great, great resume builder, and it's a really good interview one, too. Because if you serve in a restaurant, um, it's pretty much like you've been serving people. Now we're just doing it with blood and... With drugs. Drugs, yeah. <laughs> it's true. So guys, as long as you have those three um, stories, and you have to make sure... <laughs> people will type where's the third oh story? god I know. all right guys so as long as you have the <laughs> okay all right guys so as long as you have those two stories in your back pocket that show that you're a team player multitasker and you go above and beyond you should be good now another interview tip that i totally looked over is um blabbling and going on too yeah, much. Yeah, if you're, it, it's kind of depends on your personality, but I find that if I'm really nervous in those types of situations, I can just answer my question and then look and get really nervous mm -hmm. because nobody's stopping you. Yeah. So you're, you'll are you fully answer your question to the best of your ability and then they're just staring at you. That's <laughs> true. And you're like, and so the first few times that this happened, then I just kept talking. I was like, oh, they want more, mm -hmm. you know, and that is not the best thing to do. Just feel like when you feel like you fully answered mm -hmm. that question to the best of your ability, one of the best things to do is just to calmly just like wait and then just maybe smile like a little bit you know, and just, just be like, you know, yeah, I answered your question. Yeah. What's next? You don't want to dig yourself into a hole. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you can't. Cause it's almost like your, your clinical instructor. If you tell them too much information, yeah. they're going to want more from you. Mm -hmm. So give them what they want. Have, that's why guys have those stories ready to go locked and loaded so that you and can yeah, just, just be ready for complete silence when they're when you're done yes Get, and then but yeah just just yeah stop show me your face yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right guys that's it the top tips to getting your dream nursing job for more videos or for having us do more collaboration videos do more likes please and for caroline's full interview content please click down there below there's a link Thank you so much, Caroline, for being with us. Thanks. Thanks for having me, guys. I hope to see you again soon.